Outlander! Will you hear my plea? What's wrong? Renegades from my tribe are besieging the Tribunal Temple at Iliath. Our wise woman needs help persuading our Ashkon this is a terrible mistake. She wants to oppose her tribe's leader? If he won't listen, she must. We Ashlanders just don't ignore the advice of our wise women. Our Ashkon defying her wishes? It's wrong. Please, if you can help, seek her north of the temple. I'll look for her. What do you want? Do you come bearing a sword, or are your palms open to the sky? One of your scouts told me to speak with you. Then you know the shape of the problem. Our Ashkon has laid siege to the Tribunal Temple. He knows I disapprove. He rallied the hot-headed warriors of our tribe while I was meditating. He snuck out while my back was turned. What would you have me do? The monks must understand we are not their enemy. Take an offering of herbs and potions. The Ashkan took our store to his camp. His renegades are protecting them. Fight through them. Take the medicine. Deliver it to the temple. Can you do this? You don't want to attack the Ashkan directly? He acts against my wishes, but he is still our Ashkan, the patriarch of our tribe. I keep the Kagesh tribe moral and wise. He keeps them safe and strong. He is our right arm and sharpened steel. All his followers are my children. Then what end do you hope to see? I would have him give up this folly and rejoin us. We should live in peace, far from the houseman. If he won't listen to me, I'll have to step away from his side. So understand me, Outlander. If I must order Zedak's death, I've failed. The Lunar Lorcon, by Fal Drun. I will not go into the varying accounts of what happened at Adamantine Tower, nor will I relate the war of manifest metaphors that rendered those stories unable to support most qualities of what is commonly known as narrative. We all have our favorite Lorcon story and our favorite Lorcon motivation for the creation of Nern, as well as our favorite story of what happened to his heart, but the theory of the Lunar Lorcon is of special note. In short, the moons were and are the two halves of Lorcon's flesh divinity. Like the rest of the gods, Lorcon was a planet that participated in the Great Construction, except where the eight lent portions of their heavenly bodies to create the mortal planet, Lorcon's was cracked asunder and his divine spark fell to Nern as a shooting star to impregnate it with the measure of its existence and a reasonable amount of selfishness. Massa and Secunda therefore are the personifications of the dichotomy, the cloven duality, according to our tale, that Lorcon legends often rail against, ideas of the anima slash animus, good slash evil, being slash nothingness, the poetry of the body, throat, and moan slash silence as the abortive, and so on, all set in the night sky as Lorcon's constant reminder to his mortal issue of their duty. Followers of this theory hold that all other heart stories are mythical degradations of the true origin of the moons, and it needn't be said that they observe the hollow crescent theory as well.
You poison them. Ashlanders are all the same. I'm sorry. I don't believe I know you. Hidrana Kaliki sent me. I have met some from the camps outside. Our wise woman sent you? By Azura, you couldn't have come at a better time. Let me see what you have. I'll take the herbs to cure at Brethis. As for you, there are many injured soldiers here. Take the drafts and use them on the dying. What should I do when I run out of drafts? Meet me in the main temple complex. It's up the stairs to the southwest. I'll be speaking with Curate Brethis. Brethis is supposed to be wise for a houseman. Surely I can get him to see reason, even if this guar-brained ordinator won't. The Curate insists I treat this heretic like an ambassador. I don't know why. Those are her people outside screaming for our blood. I'd rather cut her head off and kick it over the wall to her barbarian kin. That would send a message. Hello there. It hurts. Another stranger in my temple? You must be the Ashlander's chosen emissary. I've used the Ashlander's medicine on dying soldiers at the wise woman's request. Though violence still threatens our sanctuary, I am grateful. I know Hedrana, and I know we both desire peace. What can we do to gather it in our arms? There's a long history of bad blood between the Ashlanders and our order. Hidrana and I can't impose peace on our followers, however we might feel. If we could stem the tide of violence, even for a moment... Can you call for reinforcements? Who would respond? The Pact holds the Covenant at bay. The only troops they've sent are their wounded and dying. You've helped the grievously injured, but wounded soldiers can't protect us. Who else is there? There is still a source of power left to us. The Tribunal. Perhaps the three will show us a way through these trying times. Go to the Sanctuary on this floor and pray at the Shrine. Perhaps the Tribunal will answer you. I'll do as you say, Curate. Ah, it's you again. The child whose soul was stolen. My lady Amalexia is grateful for the aid you gave disciple Sildras. Curate Brethist fears the temple will fall. Is there anything the tribunal can do? My lady has many responsibilities to her children. Is Iliath more important than the Covenant invasion? Than Molag Ball's schemes? Than a mother struggling to give birth in Mournhold? Or a father praying for his sick child's life in Sedanin? If the Ashlanders attack, everyone here may die. Even if they do attack, everyone here will still die someday. Even you, child. One night, you will close your eyes and never return to Tamriel. The Tribunal does not offer immortality, nor does it shield the Reverend from the trials of life. Is there nothing I can do? Ah, now that is a wiser question. Alma Alexia bids me to say this. Go to the chapel below this temple. Take ashes from the urns of Narathran and Faryon. 
Scatter them in the eternal flames beneath the northern and southern towers. What should I do after scattering their ashes? The Ordinators will appear before you. You must earn their respect. Long ago, Narathrin and Faryon were guard captains who gave their lives to defend Iliath. Defeat them in combat, and they'll aid in your defense of Iliath. Why do I have to fight them to get their help? Suppose a Myr asked you for aid against an enemy he could not defeat alone. If you can defeat him in battle, he's weak, and he wants you to solve problems for him. If he can defeat you, he's strong, and his need is genuine. dares take my ashes. Stand and fight! Cool. I will help defend the walls. Healing, Mother. What is that dreadful noise? The Ordinators have summoned their men to guard the walls. Truly, the three have touched this temple. The spirits of past Ordinators now guard our walls. Peace at last. Now, if only... Wait, who is that? Cure it! Cure it! Ashlanders have tunneled under the walls! We're all doomed. Arm Alexia, save us! Calm down. What happened? The Ashlanders are inside the temple. They've broken through an old storage tunnel under the hillside. We'll all be killed! Where did they tunnel in? They got in behind the temple building to the southwest. Ordinator Nethys has taken command of its defenses. Even with the spirits and healed soldiers, I fear we'll be overrun. This is a fight for our lives. You warn the guards. I'll help the Ordinators. Please, there's another way. It doesn't have to end like this. Not with another slaughter. Not with more blood between us. The Ashkin's warriors are attacking. How can we stop them? They attack because they don't know Hedrana disapproves. I'd hope to avoid this, but there's no choice. I would like to give you a... an artifact. Hedrana gave it to me as a last resort. What is it? I don't know. The wise woman spoke into it. When you activate it, her image appears and repeats what she said. If you use it near Zidak's Ashlanders, they should let you pass. Why didn't you use the artifact sooner? Our Ashkan acts against the wishes of our wise woman. If his duplicity was known to our people, they'd never trust him again. It would destroy him. He betrayed your people. Why do you care? He does what he thinks is best for us. It's difficult to explain to outsiders. The Ash Khan is the father of our tribe. Would you want to learn that your father is a liar? That he puts his desire for revenge above your family's safety? It's better to know the truth. 
I admire your strength. If I couldn't trust my father's wisdom, I'd feel lost. Where would I turn for counsel? I'm sorry, this isn't your concern. Where did Hedrana get this device? She didn't say. I've seen similar devices in collections of dwarven relics. I don't know why the wise woman would have such a thing. The dwarves were sinful people who wallowed in selfish curiosity. Ah, it's you. Good. We need someone here who can get things done. What's the situation? We've repelled the Ashlander's first assault. It's only a matter of time before they launch another one. I have to give them credit. Breaching the tunnel was a creative approach. Fortunately for us, the Ashlanders are lousy engineers. What do you mean? The support beams holding open the breach. I can hear them cracking from here. It would be easy to knock them down, if you had the tools to do it. What tools should I use? The temple monks do a good deal of manual labor here, gardening and such like. Look in their quarters. Those outbuildings back behind the temple, a pickaxe would work. So you want me to take out the supports while I'm in the tunnel? You're right. It's not the safest plan. That's why we'd like you to weaken the supports, not knock them down outright. If you can use a bit of finesse, they won't collapse before you hit the last one. And what will happen when I hit the last one? I think that's obvious. You need to get out as fast as you can. You really do want to help. An outlander willing to give us a chance, where wonders never cease. He didn't surrender. He fought to his last breath. Zadak's fatal flaw was rage, not cowardice. Now there is no male in our tribe fit to take his place. Some of the housemen at the temple want revenge. They will hunt our people, so Tyranot and I are leaving.
It's all going wrong. The cycle has begun anew with hate and bloodshed. Curate Brethis wanted peace, but the others? I had to run. What happened in the cave? Where is the Ashcon? He attacked, and he wouldn't surrender. I had to kill him. He'll be mourned. He was the father of us all. In spirit, I mean. I wish he could have let go of his anger. I hated seeing him like that. Why was he so angry? To you, what passes between Ashlanders and House Dunmer is distant news. They oppress us, we retaliate. For you, it's all rather abstract, but we have to live with it every day. I don't understand. What are the House Dunmer doing? When we go to market, they spit on us and call us heretics. When we pass, they draw their children inside. If our men are beaten or our women assaulted, the first question the Ordinators ask is, what did you do to provoke this? And the Ashkan was fed up with that. Last year, the Ashkan's daughter was murdered. The attackers were known, but the Ordinators did nothing. When her brother complained, they slit his throat. Hello there! Uh, please, uh, can you help? Stars above! Finally, someone with a bit of sense to them. Uh, please, traveler, help out a fair trader, aye? What happened? Bloody Argonians! That's what happened. A gang of mad lizards hissing and spitting their crazy chants. They stole every flask of my stock and fled up to the cave on the hill. I'm a brave Mur. I'll walk the Ashlands. But I'm not suicidal. How can I help? How do you think? I'm a respected trader with the Darkvale Trading Costa, one of the largest importers and exporters in the Southern Isles. Get those potions back, and I'll make it worth your while. I'll get your potions back. Don't worry about me. I'll be waiting here with these rented guar, my carts, and the stench of decomposing guards. No rush. What is the Darkvale trading costa? One of the largest merchant concerns in the Old Mary Dominion. The costa runs trade out of the Isle of Oridorn. I was sent here by my masters to secure a compact with the Dark Elven House Drez. Things have not gone according to plan. Where are you headed? The city of Kragenmoor. The head of House Drez sent the master traders of Skywatch a missive indicating his interest in commerce. And thus, ever the faithful servant, I am here. Can you tell me more about the attack? I'm not sure what to tell you. When the beasts struck our little convoy, I hid beneath the cart. I only came out once they'd gone. I hired these guards to keep me safe, but, well, I find myself wishing I'd contracted a higher class of sellsword.
Ah, you're back. Do you have my goods? I've got your goods. Here you go. By the hoary hosts of Oriel, thank you. If I'd arrived in Kragenmore empty-handed, I don't think it would have gone well for me. Go with the thanks of this humble trader and his masters in the Darkvale trading costa. Of them. He killed them all. They're all dead. Tell me what's going on. My unit was sent here because a stable boy made it to Ebenhart and reported a slave revolt. Oh, God. He butchered them. He killed his own soldiers. Who are you talking about? And what happened? Ulof Stormwall, my commander. Something happened while I was away patrolling the road. When I came back to report, he was covered in blood. He was butchering Kalendi. He saw me and came at me. He's up the road. I need to get out of here. Get to Ebenhart. I'll speak to Yulof. Say something. Speak before I hack you apart. You love? What do you mean? Good. It's not inside you. Listen to me. There's some horror making copies of people. It kills you, then makes a copy of your body for its own. But it's not a perfect copy. It can't mimic speech. Is that why you killed your troops? I had to do it. They were changing. You think I'm mad? See for yourself. I was in the cellar of that stable. It leapt into one of my troops, and I trapped it down there. Go in and introduce yourself. Did you burn these bodies? I did. Look, I don't know how this thing works. All I know is it climbs inside people. It kills them and then creates a double. When you kill the double, it sheds the body and runs. If it needs a new place to hide, these burned corpses won't be it. This corpse has stretched, bruised flesh. Its clothes are soaked with blood. Judging from the exit wound in the soldier's back, something tore its way out of her from within. Guide to the Ebonheart Pact. 
the Ebonhot Pact has forged an unlikely alliance between the far-flung nations of Morrowind, Skyrim, and Black Marsh, bringing together the Dark Elves, Nords, and Free Argonians for their mutual defense. Thanks to the size of its allied nations and the distances involved, the pact remains relatively free of inner strife and discord. The Nords and Dark Elves have so much of their own territory to deal with that they have little time to spare for meddling in each other's affairs. The Ebonhard Pact came about in Second Era 572 in response to the Second Akaviri invasion of Northern Tamriel. The Nords, Dark Elves, and Free Argonians joined forces to save the rest of Tamriel from slaughter and subjugation. Forged in war, the Alliance brought a sudden new power to the continent. At first, few believed the Dark Elves would be able to maintain an alliance with their ancient blood enemies and former slaves, but after a troubled decade, the Pact remained strong and intact. A great moot governs the Pact. This council of equals from each of the member races is not only known for hot tempers and loud voices, but also for mutual respect and an amazing will to hold the pact together against all odds. Only as equals can the allies hope to modify the pride of the Nords and the Dark Elves while addressing the injuries suffered by the once enslaved Argonians. Serving as an integral, perhaps even critical, part of the alliance, the Dark Elves of Morrowind are aloof, proud, and profoundly strange. They work hard to conceal their disdain for their inferior allies, but the current crisis requires the strong arms of Nords and wily resourcefulness of Argonians to keep rival alliances at bay. Wizardly craft and a deep well of experience serve the Dark Elves well, providing the pact with the vital ability to react and adapt, something neither the Aldmeri Dominion nor the Daggerfall Covenant can claim to do as well. The pact fields superior warriors and sorcerers, and they possess asset that no other race can match. Three living gods, Ormalexia, Vivek, and Sothasil, abide among them. The Nords of Eastern Skyrim are fearless and aggressive, industrious and enterprising. They excel at war and prosper in trade, and they are without equal as explorers and trailblazers. Strong, stubborn, and hardy, they customarily solve problems through combat. Nords cheerfully rush into battle with a ferocity that frightens and appalls their enemies. They accept and even revel in their role as shock troops for the Ebonheart Pact. Nords are direct, not subtle. They champion simple solutions in the meetings of the Great Moot though they are often outvoted by shrewd Argonians and sagacious Dark Elves. On the field of battle, however, they have no equals. Pact generals tend to be Nords, as are most of the soldiers in the field. The Nords don't mind. This means they also get first choice of the spoils of war. By their decisive intervention against the Akaviri, the Argonians of Black Marsh won their freedom from Dark Elf enslavement, and the lessons they learned have made them a valuable member of the Pact. Reserved and alien, their expressionless faces and flat intonations make it difficult for other races to interpret their true motives. Nevertheless, the Argonians possess a cool intelligence. Slow to trust and hard to know, their natural agility makes them as comfortable employing magic as they are using stealth and steel. Years of defending their borders have made them experts in waging war against stronger, more traditionally organized armies. Equally at home on land or in water, they serve as scouts and skirmishers for packed forces. Other aspects of Argonian culture are nearly incomprehensible to outsiders, including their social hierarchy and collective decision-making. Their representatives present strange proposals without explanation, but their allies have learned that there's always a reason for everything they do. Today, the young Yorin the Scold King serves as the acting High King of the Moot, but not all in the Alliance support him. As the members of the Pact struggle to maintain and solidify their alliance, they must also deal with internal threats to each of their nations. Unsolved. These threats could destroy them before they ever face the Dominion or Covenant in open battle. Have you seen my husband? We got separated when those Kajiti animals started rioting. No, I haven't seen him. This is all their fault. The hauntings of the destroyed crops, the ruin of a beautiful home, their foul-smelling animals. I told Tyril that catmen make poor slaves, and then there's that monster. They brought it here. What do you know about the monster? Rashada summoned it. He's some kind of shaman. My husband broke up a ritual that Catman was performing a few nights ago. We punished everyone there and confiscated a totem from their makeshift altar. The creature's afraid of that totem. What do you mean? I saw the creature slip into one of our guards. He attacked me, so I panicked and hit him with the totem. He wailed and ran off. I should have kept that totem with me. In all the chaos, I left it in our bedroom.
Well, what did you see? Speak, curse you! I fought it. It escaped from the dead soldier. That's about what I figured. Run along, pup. Go hide. I'll handle this. If the monster catches you, well, I'll have to kill a copy of your corpse. There's something wrong with Tyrrell. I'm... I'm afraid to go near him. That's not Tyrrell. I found his corpse in your bedroom. No, I don't believe you. I know that's him. There's just something wrong with him. I'll prove it to you with this idol. I heard Ruvali scream. She said you chased it down here. I took a swing at it, but it got away. Is Ruvali safe? She's upstairs crying over her husband's corpse. Go on up there. If her husband starts to move, kill him with fire. We were going to expand the plantation. We wanted to trade the useless catmen for some strong Bretons and Redguards. Do you want this idol? I want nothing that belonged to that dirty catman, Rashada. He brought that monster here. He must know a way to send it back. The catman's inside the barn in the center of the plantation. Maybe he stayed to watch his monster tear us apart. Wicked animal. Here, take the idol. I don't want it near me. Stay here. I'll talk to the Kashit. <laughs> this dead Kashit clutches a message. Read the message. O oh, Tesh, once you've started the fires by the house, meet with Uniasi and free the prisoners. He'll be waiting south of the barn. Tonight, we will find freedom. Jakor. I should investigate the building south of the barn. This woman's body has a crumpled note beneath it. Read the note. I'm Jesse, after the prisoners are free, bring them to the quarters east of the barn. We've hidden weapons there. Arm them and prepare to fight. Jakor.
everyone take heart. Otesh will set fires, and Rashada will summon spirits to create chaos. Un Jesse will bring the prisoners here. Meet your core in the pumpkin patch by the stables. Until then, be brave and think of home. You bring Rashada the idol of the hollow moon, yes? Moons guide you, stranger. Is it true you summoned that monster? Yes, Rashada's beautiful wife is most precious Jazadi. The lashes stripped her fur to the bone. She died from their torture. That is why this one called the Dromathra. Rashada regrets this. Trading hate only brings more suffering. What's a Dromathra? If Rashada had many knights, he could explain. We integrate Tamriel's gods with our own so we can blend in. We also do this to amuse ourselves. But there are Khajiiti spirits outside Tamriel's pantheon. Dark spirits. They are Tromathra. How do we stop this one? Use the idol on the dark spirits. Then kill them to charge it. While you hold the idol, anything that possesses you will cease to be. This is how we stop the monster. This one must apologize to Rivali. Meet us in her home when the idol is charged. This Kashit is carrying a map and a sealed message addressed to Vahara. An area north of the plantation is circled on the map. I should find the location on the map. Rashada asked to be forgiven. The beast blathered about understanding and change. The animal responsible for the death of my Tyrell dared to address me. He spoke of peace? He spoke of his dead wife and his tortured people. He's mimicking sorrow. But Khajiit are incapable of normal emotions. Right? Look at my sweet Tyrell. Rashada must pay for Tyrell's death. You agree with me, right? I know Rashada genuinely mourns his wife. You believe that? But my Tyrell... Enough. Enough death. Where is Rashada now? The cat went to the stables. Tell Ulov to meet us there. Rashada wanted you to use the totem on some godless altar east of the pumpkin patch. Once you've found Ulov and used the totem, meet us at the stables. Did he say why I must use the altar? He said the ritual would protect you. If you kill the creature while holding the charged totem, it will be destroyed when it tries to possess you. I don't know whether to believe him or not.
I saw Khajiit run out the door. What's going on? That's Rashada. He has a plan to slay the monster. Go to the stables and wait for him. I'm taking orders from a milk-drinking pup and a cat. <laughs> this should be amusing. I'll be there. You're going to free me. Why should I care about his wife's death? Look at him. He's an animal. He's the enemy. My Tiro. He took my Tiro. Where is Yulov? I didn't see him when I arrived, but he must have been here. Rashada was already bound. Ulov must have. Wait. Olaf? My hands are betraying me. I can't believe I listened to you. Did you kill that monster? Yulav is dead. Good. But I won't forgive that Khajiit for Tyrell's death. Even if he does forgive me for the death of his wife. But I suppose there's been enough killing. Dark elves view Rashada's people as animals. They butcher the ones they do not enslave. Rashada did not believe their wicked, cowardly blood ran through you. He was wrong. Show mercy to Vahara. She wields no weapons, nor does she harbor ill thoughts against you. Jakor led the revolt here. Did you know him? Yes. We grew up together in Sensha. Jakur looked after Vahara. He fought the slavers to protect her. They put Vahara in the mines, and Jakur down here. Word came to Vahara that Chakur would start a riot. He did it to be with Vahara again. This is for you. This? No. This isn't happening. Please, leave this one to her sorrow. <laughs> 